There we go. Okay. So this is the this is the completed gear train like gear setup for a G56. Right now we're in neutral because all the gates are there. And it's like yeah, this is a good way to indicate neutral, but neutral means that all these sliders are in the middle. And there's a hub inside. Then on each side you see it like a like a like a sprocket almost. Mm -hmm. So these sprockets are actually what drive the gear feed. So a lot of people think that when you select a gear, you're connecting this gear to this gear, like a drive gear. Lose, these are always in constant mesh, and these are always spinning whenever your foot is off the clutch. So whenever your foot is off the clutch, this is being driven by the crank, your input. And whenever your input is spinning, your front counter shaft gear is spinning, which means the whole shaft is spinning because there's nothing selectable on here. So that means that input spinning, the counter gear, the whole counter shaft, and every speed gear or selectable gear that's bearing mounted is also spinning. So if this is at 1,000 RPM, this is 1,000 RPM, and then whatever the RPM is that it drives these gears based on the ratio. So all you're doing is taking this and selecting yeah. which one of these engaged. Yeah. Which one actually put the so let's yeah. say you're, when you select fifth gear, you're doing that. Okay. And what you're doing is you're locking this gear, which is the input shaft, whatever. In fifth gear, you're just going direct drive. So you're locking the input shaft to this uh, clutch gear, which is splined to the hub via this collar. So this is locked to this, locked to this, locked to this, you know, which is locked to that hub that's inside. It's powered completely through it all. Yep. So input shaft, clutch gear, slider, hub to the shaft and out. So as you can see, whenever you slide your, see your, you're just going like that. So you're just moving a slider. Oh, and these okay. are always spinning, right? So, so that's why five. your three to four and five to six is always the easiest because all you're doing is going from here to right there versus selecting the different things in the different rail. Otherwise, so, you've got to have this one hit in the middle, grab the Something next you're going to find really interesting that you probably don't know. Okay. Show them how a secret after actually works. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a lot of. So that is basically a small brake pad. It is. So. I, I Basically, don't, I don't have to explain it to him like that, yeah. like, you know, yeah. yeah. So, how this works is that, like I said, the input shaft spinning, the counter shaft, all this is spinning right at different speeds. So, when you're going to make a shift, what you're trying to do is get the gear, which, you know, driven by this, the gear and the clutch gear, to match the same speed as the output shaft. So that way, when this is spinning the exact same RPM as the output, that collar can slide without That's grinding. why a rev match makes everything so yeah. much smoother. Okay. So when you synchronize something, right? I'm gonna try to do it. These are free spinning inside mm -hmm. while this is in neutral. And then when you go to move this slider up, what you're doing is taking this from Applying a free spinning. Yeah, you're squeezing it together and it locks. No mm -hmm. shit. Yeah, feel and how so little it, pressure it takes yeah. for that to lock where you can't turn. Push oh, down a little bit yeah. and spin. Right. Oh, hell. Yeah. So there's a couple different synchronizer materials that'll kind of approach that differently, but the brass ones are really good. But what you're doing, all the oil is in here as it's spinning, and when you compress it, you want to displace that oil really Get rid of it. Yeah. So a lot of people think because it's a big heavy duty truck transmission, you want like 140 weight oil or something. It's not actually true. We like a really thin oil, like a pen's oil, because it'll displace really quickly. Get that push it to lock that. Yeah. So that's why when you were mentioning, we were talking about the fluid. Um, when it's when it's really cold, it's hard to shift because it's like syrup. It won't push it out. It's hard to displace off of this, and it can actually be bad because if you try to force it for too long, you can start to burn it. Burn So we really, really prefer a lighter oil that has good properties to, to protect the gear teeth. Um, I don't know what he's got mixed in with stuff here, but it's, inter it's definitely interesting. The only thing that I was always concerned with on fluid, like say an APF, a lot of people. Run. So obviously, especially on like my truck here, where you're trying to put so much power through it, like there's a lot of pressure on these gears. Yep. So I just feel like when it's turning that fast and putting that much pressure against it, a thin fluid is going to get out to where you're metal to metal rubbing through. Maybe. Um, this, and then sticking the gear in and that's when you put yeah. So if you use if you used a really cheap fluid. Then yeah, that's that's a concern. But something like a red line or an ends oil, even though it's thin, very thin, they still have yeah. They have they have a ton of really expensive additives in there to help. Like it doesn't shear, it doesn't like you know, move or displace. So it actually keep a fluid between them. 
but it will help you shift faster. And then with the lighter fluid, it helps circulate the needle bearings and things like that a little bit better. So it's it's counterintuitive, but once you kind of see the inner workings, it does make sense. So which case, I don't put a lot of power or anything through until it's warm. So I wonder how much this sort of bends down when it gets. You know what I mean? Like where it's stiff cold, obviously you're trying to push that out. But under, say, operating temperature, how thin does that get to where you can? Yeah. Exactly. So, so as you can see, like the shaft right now is spinning very, very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. And the clutch gear is spinning really fast. Mm -hmm. Can you do me a favor, man? Can you can you turn this slowly while I do a yep. shift? Yeah. So when you yeah, you need to hold them together a little bit. Yeah. So when you go to shift, you kind of lift, and those teeth are kind of pressing on each other, locks together, and that allows it to slide. So this is happening like 2,000 RPM. When you put a little pressure on that, it literally stops you. Can't turn. So then when you grab it here real fast, you're you're trying to hope them match up. Yep. And you know, using the wrong fluid that's incompatible with the, the brass. You know, there's some things that are not yellow metal safe, as we call it. It'll eat that brass and it will cause it to, to wipe This is not. <laughs> so that's the reason clutch drag is also hard on the Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. it's trying to spend. It's having to stop the inverse shaft with this little brass piece. Yeah. Instead of the clutch releasing it, just slowing down the. Yeah. So what? Why yeah, it's fourth gear in these such a black spot. Just the leverage. where they're at, just the ratio, just the, the like the mechanical leverage between the, the output. Is um, it in the middle here? So it goes from on the main shaft, it goes uh, the bigger the gear is the lower the number. Right. So this is first and reverse are down here, they're huge. Mm -hmm. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So because we're fist direct, it's up by the input shaft. Yeah. So this is what this this tiny little guy, but it's got this big gear driving it. So there's a reduction coming in here, and then so that's why I pull it for so yeah, so problematic. You know? yeah. I mean that's everybody always from what I've heard say. Yeah. So we when we designed our billet ones with with the, the machinists, we actually widened it slightly mm -hmm. um, to try to help out as much as we can. Um, but yeah, so when you're when you're synchronizing, like it's it's cool to think about it just isolating this gear. Mm -hmm. But I want to expand on what he said. Um, when you're you're using the synchronizer slowly to press on this to break this gear to lock it to the shaft, you're actually not just stopping this one little gear. You're stopping the gear that's attached to it as well. So you're not only slowing yeah, you're not only slowing this, you're slowing this. And when one of the first things I said was when if the clutch is being driven, I mean the input shaft is being driven, it's driving this. So you got one force coming in here with the dragging clutch and one force through your synchronizer trying to stop it. So that's why if you don't have full clutch disengagement, it's gonna ship like crap, it'll be really hard to ship because this little synchronizer can't stop your engine as much as people try. So, you know, it, uh, there's a lot to it. There's quite a bit to it. There you go. I just, dude, I'm a very like, <laughs> Which is I one reason, so like, so the more power you build, the bigger clutch you're in. Why three discs? Like, you got three discs to drag. No matter how much you pull that pressure plate back, there's still three discs there making friction. Yep. And work, the whole, just, uh, I'm for, the word is uh, escaping me right now, but like the turbulent air, even yeah. being really close together, that has a lot of on it. But in all reality, in all reality, triple discs are actually extremely street friendly. Um, you're, you're, That's I mean, Kenny told me he, I ran a dual disc, uh, fender style center and iron, and he said, I'm telling you, we'll be happier with a triple disc yeah. diaphragm center and iron to be able to release and shift better yeah. than fender style dual disc. Yeah. I didn't know they made a center and iron with a diaphragm. That's that's pretty neat. I saw, I saw it briefly when we took it off. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what, dude, everybody, there's been two questions on this truck making this pack. What clutch are you running and who built the trains? Yeah. yeah. Right now it's been, hey, it's a stock train. Got a Kenny triple disc. Everybody's on there in the fall. It's got to be some custom four or five disc clutch. Like, dude, a good triple disc. The center and iron will hold a lot. Yep. Center iron drive, disc right. is. Oh, it makes all the difference. Makes all I went from the same exact clutch. I don't want to lose that. From a ceramic <laughs> to a center iron. And 
and I mean, I went from like having to watch how it launched in third to just all the way wide open. Get out, yeah. Take off, and it's been off. Oh, yeah. Way different just from going.